Ghana and Cote d'Ivoire are the first two African countries to receive uh, coronavirus vaccines through the COVAX uh, vaccine sharing initiative. Uh, last week, a delivery of 600,000 doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine arrived in Accra. Wednesday, while Cote d'Ivoire received 504,000 doses on Friday. As other African countries await their doses, that, what will this uh, mean for the rollout of vaccines across uh, sub-Saharan Africa in the coming months? Uh, Matt Kendega, an associate practice lead at uh, Frontier View, joins us now to make sense of this. Hello, Matt. Great to have you. Hello. Thanks for having me on the show today. Great. So following the arrival of vaccines as sourced through the COVAX scheme in Ghana and Cote d'Ivoire, how soon will African uh, governments begin mass vaccination campaigns? Yeah, so it's worth noting that most African governments got off to a pretty slow start when it came to procuring vaccines. Mm. Uh, as recently as the middle of January, most governments didn't have firm plans to procure and roll out vaccines. Uh, but I would say the COVAX uh, delivery of vaccines is very positive. It's a very positive development, especially for West Africa. Um, some markets, including Kenya and South Africa, have also made plans to independently procure vaccines, uh, you know, not part of COVAX. So that will boost the rollout process. Um, but I would say most sub-Saharan sub African countries especially uh, will remain quite reliant on the COVAX scheme to deliver the majority of their vaccines uh, through the rest of this year. And so this will probably delay the rollout of a, a mass vaccination campaign. In practice, we see very few countries if any, being able to vaccinate more than 50% of their populations uh, in sub-Saharan Africa before the end of this year. And uh, which uh, sectors of the economy will be most directly affected by uh, the relatively slow rollout of uh, vaccines across Africa this year? Yeah, so um, businesses that are reliant on cross-border supply chains, cross-border trade, are probably going to be uh, affected uh, through the rest of this year. So we won't see a return to the disruptions that we saw in 2020. But there are probably going to be some lingering uh, restrictions as governments try to uh, pre pre prevent the spread of COVID-19 between countries, but also, you know, new variants if they do emerge. So there could be some disruption there. The hospitality industry really is going to be quite severely affected for the foreseeable future. Although most uh, domestic hospitality sectors have recovered somewhat uh, from 2020, uh, some consumers still won't be as confident as they were uh, to go out in the absence of uh, a COVID vaccine. Uh, but also there will be lingering restrictions uh, and, and difficulties for international tourists that will affect uh, hospitality. So European, North American, Asian tourists. Um, in the absence of a, of a mass vaccination campaign in sub-Saharan Africa, um, there, there probably will be uh, some hesitancy amongst international tourists. So companies exposed to tourism will be quite negatively affected for you know, the rest of 2021. So how will the rollout of vaccines affect uh, the approach of African, uh, the African governments take to uh, commercial restrictions aimed at containing uh, the virus? Yeah, so the, the big question is about, you know, really about, you know, will there be more lockdowns? Or will there be tighter commercial restrictions going forwards? The short answer really is no. We don't expect to see significant tightening of commercial restrictions uh, in Africa over the course of uh, 2021. Um, that said, if there is a, a sort of sharp spike in cases or, or deaths from COVID-19 across Africa, we could see some tighter restrictions. Uh, South Africa is a very good example. So South Africa saw a major second wave of coronavirus towards the end of last year, the beginning of this year. And what the government did was it uh, introduced a tighter curfew. It uh, banned the sale of alcohol. It also uh, restricted um, interprovincial and international travel. And so effectively what it did is it tightened restrictions as far as it could without shutting down the economy. And so we would expect... Uh, most African governments in a worst case scenario to follow a similar model. So there, there is risk of some tighter commercial restrictions, uh, but we don't see uh, a return to significant lockdowns or, or re really tight uh, COVID-19 uh, commercial restrictions in, in 2021. All right, we'll continue to track uh, the uh, rollouts. Uh, thank you so much uh, for your time, Matt Kindergar. Great to have you as always. Thank you very much. Thank you.